When life throws you a curveball, how are you going to handle adversity? Welcome to the Fearless Mindset Podcast, where you're about to go on a journey as I interview security, business, and entertainment leaders on what it takes to stay fearless. I'm your host, Mark Ludlow, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, folks. This is Mark Ludlow with the Fearless Mindset Podcast, and uh, we got a great guest today all the way from the East Coast. And uh, glad to have you come on, Glenn. I know you're busy. And uh, folks, this is going to be a great story. Uh, he's going to share some experiences with you all. And uh, he comes with a vast experience in the military, been overseas. And uh, he's been, done a lot of things that would just make you go, whoa, Jason Bourne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Glenn's got a great servant's heart. And uh, he has really loves to serve and teach. And uh, he comes in from a different place. He's got the you know t-shirt and done some things, and uh, he's got a lot of wisdom. So if you're y- the younger generation trying to break in this business, uh, this this shows for you. And if you're transitioning out of the military, leaving an agency somewhere because of defunding the police, you're going to get some gold nuggets out of this uh, out of this talk. So thanks, Glenn, for your time. I know you're very busy with your organization there in Tennessee and uh, making sure your bosses are safe and your team's safe. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me on today. It's uh, really an honor. Um, I have to be honest with you. I was a little bit nervous. I haven't done a podcast before. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I I bowed my head for a second and said, hey, you know, let the right words come out so that I can uh, help share some some wisdom, hopefully, uh, uh, today as we uh, as we talk. Yeah, it's uh, it was a great conversation that I had with Glenn earlier a couple of weeks ago. Where we kind of share some stuff offline. And, uh, you know, it's all about the story, the story that impacts and empowers a lady, a gentleman, you know, somebody that's going through some tough times and in the industry and in security industry or anything. You know, Glenn's got some great stories to share. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you on. And I know you're going to add value. Um, what's, what's the biggest... Uh, the biggest mistakes you see in the corporate security that people make at your level, what, what's, the, what's the, like the two top three mistakes you see most agents make trying to impress the client? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. I mean, the first thing that I would say in order to not make any of those, uh, of those uh, mistakes is to always uh, – lead with humility, right? I mean, none of us know it all. Uh, if you're coming from a, a military or a uh, law enforcement background, it's not the same uh, as uh, being a security professional. So come in uh, humble, ask questions, right? We always want to be asking questions to, to glean knowledge, but I think that that's the most important. Uh, in terms of, of mistakes, I see uh, people making is perhaps um, over promising and under delivering. So, and again, that just goes back to a mindset of, Hey, I think I, I think I know, you know, I bring um, this other experience with me that doesn't equate to the job perhaps in the, uh, in the corporate world. Yeah. From, from your military background and being overseas, how is that environment so different from the corporate security? What, what are the big differences you see where agents will struggle coming from the military and trying to go into corporate, what are the mental shifts that they need to make to be successful? Yeah. So, uh, Mark, I have, I've worked, uh, you know, I was in the military, I uh, did about four years of service in the U S army. I, uh, I was uh, field artillery, but I did get my, uh, I did get my going to school badges, uh, airborne and ranger while I was, uh, going through the process. Um, but, uh, you know, that also took me to Germany and I spent uh, 15 years over there, 12 of it as a civilian in the private sector doing security. Um, it's a lot different. I worked initially for an Israeli uh, security company in aviation security over there. Um, again, going back to, you know, stick to being authentic, who you are, bring with you what you know, and ask questions again so that you can learn as you're you know walking through the process of whatever that operation looks like um you know 
I was not an expert going into the field over there into aviation security. I really had limited knowledge. So I just needed to be quiet and listen to instruction and let them teach me how to do the job. And, and through asking the questions, uh, I was able to do that. It's uh, way back in the day, and I'll date myself because what we were learning back then was profiling. Uh, it was after uh, Pan Am 103 and Lockerbie, and where uh, we really had a heightened state of, of security where uh, the Israelis uh, came out with profiling systems and teaching us how to do that. But um, much, much different. Of course, all of them do come from the military. So it's a very militaristic type approach. Whereas you transition that back here to the U.S. in the present day, and you really need to be bringing a whole lot more customer service with that. Um, and I was listening to one of your podcasts yesterday of, of a guy who does uh, personal protection. I don't recall the book he wrote, um, but it was uh, uh, something like Unseen. Uh, and he talks about that. And I think that that's just so important that we listen to what the client needs and uh, provide all the security expertise that's that's needed. But at the same time, you need to also show some customer service uh, because at the end of the day, most likely in this environment, which is a, you know, basically a non-wartime environment here in the States, it's going to be 99, 95% of the time not show action, right? It's just going to be the mundane day to day. So if you're going to provide additional value that comes through, you know, listening to the customer and, and hearing what it is that they exactly need. I mean, I can remember uh, during the podcast I was listening to, he was saying, if the customer asked me to wear a suit, I wear a suit. If he wants me in, in blue jeans and a t-shirt, well, you know, that's what uh, I do. I don't need to uh, impress anybody uh, in that way. Yeah, I mean, it's so true. I mean, I, I I'll remember it was a certain royal family I was on and I was watching the kid and we were at the park and guess what my duty was? Hanging out the, the uh, I guess, overseers of that principal and I sat on the grass and watched. Just Not in the grass. a three-piece suit, right? You wasn't a three-piece three suit. Piece suit, right? <laughs> and then one day we went to the, uh, went to the beach, wore, wore shorts and flip-flops and a t-shirt and a baseball cap. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. or shorts. Yeah. And if you're like, uh, I have a friend that's working on a with a certain uh, client in Bahamas, he's scuba diving with that client, wow. and uh, he's scuba diving, and that's what his uh, wardrobe of the day is: shorts and a t-shirt. That's yeah, it. Yeah, and it's just it is. It's interesting. You know, I come from background of always wearing a uniform, right, all the way through from the military into the civilian sector. You know, years ago we all wore. Um, coats and ties, right? And uh, until I transitioned to Bridgestone, I'd always been in a coat and tie. And then I came here and uh, it was, uh, you know, Bridgestone polos and, uh, and uh, you know, slacks or even jeans on, on most days. So that's been uh, a, uh, a big difference and a big transition, but you don't want to necessarily stand out as a security professional. Exactly. You just got to blend in, like you said, and be like a chameleon servicing your your bosses. What is a day in life? We know you're at Bridgestone. And what what are the issues you're seeing going in to 2022 right now? What what are the problems and you know the analysis analysis going on in data as far as you know perceived threats? What is your organization safeguarding themselves for for the new year? What what are what are those problems you guys see? A lot of different things going on, Mark. I mean, we still have this, you know, looming pandemic and, you know, we're, we're looked to as the um, more than just security professionals, right? Because if you think about a pandemic, well, it, you know, those are health issues or safety issues and not necessarily security issues, but because of our backgrounds and knowing how to uh, operationally evolve into what's needed, they come to us and they ask us for advice and ask us what we should be doing. So we're still, you know, struggling through that right now. Um, you know, do we continue wearing masks? No masks. What do we do um, in order to be inclusive, right? We need to be inclusive in everything we do. Well, we have vaccinated and unvaccinated. So what do you do there? 
Um, so it's, it's still, it's still a challenge. And, you know, we have, uh, kept track of all of our, uh, all of our cases that we've had in the last uh, few years, uh, in, uh, North and, and South America. Um, and it's just been a real challenge. So kind of that is still the umbrella. And then, uh, below that Bridgestone is the, um, title, uh, tire sponsor for the, uh, one of the title sponsors for the Olympics. So, you know, we have uh, people over uh, in China for that. Um, so we're paying close attention to that. And we always have special events that we're planning for uh, and needing to ensure we're providing the right level of, uh, of support to keep both our customers and our um, VIPs and executives safe. Uh, this coming weekend, we have the NHL Stadium Series here in Nashville. So the weather is your worst enemy sometimes, politics, geopolitics, uh, supply chain issues with rubber, I'm sure. Okay, yeah, good. So uh, we have uh, industrial products plants in uh, China and in um, Poland. So I'll be conducting training and an exercise for that crisis management team uh, coming up here very shortly because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen uh, uh, over in uh, that part of the world uh, with uh, China and Taiwan and, you know, the issues with uh, Russia, what they're going to be doing. It looks like they've finished their exercises or what have you. But, you know, it's all a test. It's all testing the water, see, see what you can do. So we, we want to stay prepared and make sure our executives are, are well-trained and, and ready to manage any type of crisis. It's like dealing with a big old chess game, isn't it? When you're running a corporation like Bridgestone, you got to see who's what the players are doing. You, I'm sure you have big clients in China. You have probably clients in Russia. Everybody's consuming rubber and tires and you got to move vehicles. So it's just part, part of the business. Yeah, yeah. And supply chain, of course, for all of us today is a is a definite challenge. Do you think the supply chain issue will be become a worsen issue as we go in, you know, or is, is it going to get easier if, as they lift the mandates for, from COVID or how's that looking on your guys' end? I think it's going to become better, easier. The uh, concern, of course, all of us have is uh, do we believe that pricing will go back to what it was? And I don't see that happening. You know, pricing right. is exorbitant uh, and and that's going to remain that way. Um, but I think that supply chain, you know, will loosen back up and come back to some sort of normalcy. Um, but it's also going to take some time still. I see it at least taking another um, couple quarters, probably Q3. Wow. So we're just going to take us like like you said, probably a few months before we come out of all this, probably this summer, and fall before we we start seeing the light light again at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Some some people say that the magic uh, time will be during midterms. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> these young people, they don't know what yeah. to do with these prices of inflation that hitting all these products they buy. They go, oh, my gosh, it's so expensive. I'm like, yeah? Well, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for the audience, this is Glenn. He is the director of security for Bridgestone Tire, a global organization, and he oversees global security for the entire you know company as far as tires go and events, like you said. And he can find him on LinkedIn and uh, served some time in the army and uh, did some stuff overseas. And now he's in the corporate side of the house. And uh, I think I think Lynn likes a slower pace. Uh, at Bridgestone, but it doesn't sound like you're very slow pace with all the traveling you've been doing. Yeah, no, not at all. And uh, yeah, I actually report to the uh, vice president of corporate security here, but uh, I am responsible though for business continuity and crisis management for the company. Yeah, a lot which, of red uh, tape, which keeps me plenty busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, Glenn's also got some interesting stories too. You actually oversaw. I didn't know this, but you were weren't you in charge of a certain airport? At one time, overseeing security at some different airports. Well, you know, when I finished, uh, when I was over in uh, Europe working in aviation security, I was over there uh, during 9/11. Uh, and like all of us, I can tell you exactly where I was. I was walking across the gym at Rhein-Main Air Base, uh, finished a workout, 
when I got news that it happened and I went home and and watched that uh, uh, through the night. And it, and it of, of course, as as an American, it really it really stung. Uh, and I felt like I had to come back to the States and do something. So I came back to the States the uh, early the following year and I became the director of security operations for the uh, San Francisco airport. Um, and uh, tough job because they it was the uh, it was a test uh, with a contract company with oversight of the TSA. So we had uh, the uh, you know government auditing from DC all the time over us, and uh, it was it was pretty challenging. And I did that for a year, but uh, as you may recall, uh, some good friends of mine who were working down with an engineering company but he also in aviation found out that company was going to be uh, doing about two and a half billion dollars worth of reconstruction work in Iraq. And, uh, and, and they threw my, my name in the hat as good friends saying, Hey, we know a guy who could help manage operations over there. So yeah, I, uh, I went down to that company. I did that for uh, five years um, managing operations uh, just throughout the country there. And I know that when we talked about it, you know, uh, we talked, you know, that's a, you know, wartime environment. And I was going in and out of country all the time and traveling around the country. Um, but I never had a worry about getting hurt or killed. Um, not that that couldn't have absolutely happened, but going back to my faith, uh, I just felt like if it was going to be God's plan for me to be over there doing that, that of course you can't be stupid. You have to have good operating procedures good people in place, uh, doing the right things, but still things can happen. And, uh, and, you know, my feeling was always that if that time were to come, then that was, you know, his will and, you know, I'd be, I'd be taken, but, um, you know, he showed me grace and, uh, you know, we went, uh, five years over there without losing, uh, an engineer across the country, uh, doing all of that work. And it was, uh, it was probably the the thing I'm most proud of my career is being able to utilize some of my military experience to go over uh, and uh, manage that operation. So that was uh, that was really really good. Well, thanks for sharing about your your personal values and, and your faith because it sounds like your faith has kept you fearless in your mindset and being successful. You've been pretty fearless in your confidence in in, in your faith to carry you through some tough times. Yeah, yeah, it it really has. I mean, it comes back to, you know, service to others. I, I always feel like, you know, serving others brings me more joy than uh, than I, I feel like I'm giving to that individual who's who's receiving. I just, you know, love that and try to work in that capacity in everything I do. Uh, when I left that company, I, I mentored because mentorship is also part of serving, right? We're supposed to be good mentors to our people. Um, the, uh, gentleman who I mentored over there, he's still in my old position, uh, 10 years later over with that company. Uh, I mentored him into that and just loved to see him prosper over there. And, you know, I've had my mentors as well, who, uh, you know, have really helped me along with my career and my way. And I'll just give a shout out, uh, to, to one, probably everybody knows, but I feel it's, it, it's, it's worth a, uh, a mention is Ray O'Hara. With, Ray, uh, yeah. you know, the past, past president of ASIS, he is just a dear, dear friend and has really helped guide me through uh, through my career since I've been back. So, you know, yeah, it's funny you mentioned Ray because Ray is, like, like you said, he's influenced so many thought leaders. So, you know, yeah. uh, Ray O'Hara is, you know, mentored. He was on the uh, board with AS Solutions and AS Solutions blow up. And shout out to Christian Wesson for what Christian Wesson, Ray and Brian did over there with AS Solutions. They just blew that up. And then, of course. Uh, Ray yeah. had a great influence on Robert Dodge, who now just became the CEO of uh, mm -hmm. a new organization there. And you're right, mentorship is huge. And yeah, much respect for Ray. And you know what? He still picks up the phone and calls me. You know, like he doesn't have enough to do. He still <laughs> picks up the phone to call and say, hey, you know, how are things going? So, you know, that's that's so important when it comes back to, to service. Now, he's retired in Vegas, I heard. Yeah, he is. 
news, and the last that I heard is that he is, may be moving to Phoenix. So I don't want to throw out any doors, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he may be moving again. Yeah, for family yeah. reasons. Oh, of course. Yeah, he's a legend in the business. Yeah. Been a long, around a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. Good, good guy. What is your advice, you know, to to the people that are we have? Let's say we have a couple of people that are struggling, you know, to figure out what they're doing in this industry, and you know, they're trying to get recognition or they're trying to break in and make a name for themselves, and you know, you you have social media pressure. You have all these, you know, different organizations on Facebook, and uh, you have a lot of. Uh, seems like there's a lot of pressure for the people to be expose themselves uh, to get attention, maybe to get work or whatever. What, what's your advice to that young man or young lady who who wants to get a bigger break and take their career to the next level? What's your advice to them? Create authentic relationships. Ooh. Create authentic relationships is so important. And and you know what? Ask for help. Just ask for help. I can tell you, anybody who comes to me, if I see something come over that somebody wants to connect with me on LinkedIn and I and it looks like sales or, or, or whatever, I may take it, may not. But if the person reaches out to me and says, hey, here's my predicament, I need help. Absolutely. I can't say no. You, you, wow. I find it very, very difficult for anyone to say no to, to someone who comes to you and says, can you help me? I need help. And so, you know, that that is very important. And, and for, you know, what we do here at Bridgestone. So we have an organization here called Bravo, which is Bridgestone America's Veterans Organization. Um, and we serve the community. We serve those coming out of uh, law enforcement, but primarily military. Uh, Mid-April, we're going to have an event at our, at our headquarters here in Nashville for guys coming out that were spec ops. Uh, we're going to try to help them and mentor them into positions. We're looking for good people. I think they're probably pretty good people. And so uh, in all areas, not only security, but a lot of the different operational areas in the company. Um, but doing things like that, uh, I think, is... Uh, very, very important. And, and you you know as well as I do, when you get to be our age, we finally realize it. But I wish that I had done a better job when I was younger of creating long-lasting, solid relationships. No, true. Because those relationships are the, the, the keys of those doors that will open up down the road. Because it's the relationships that trust you, they give you opportunities. And I think you we get lost. We get lost behind the Zooms, the COVID nineteen. We've been in isolation, and we really haven't been talking to each other for a couple of years because we've been all locked down and you know stay home. And so I think a lot of us have lost that edge of you know networking, mixing it up, and all that with people, and we forgot how to do that almost because we're all so used to this environment on Zoom. It made us yeah. lazier. We travel less, gained a little weight. Uh, depression issues, especially with our veterans, and they're, you know, getting on the sauce, maybe the pills, maybe they're taking more than they need to for anxiety. But, you know, the true relationships are created face to face. They are. They are in there. You know, someone like myself who is more, you know, my tendency is more towards being an introvert, just calling myself out, though, and understanding, hey, you, this is, this is important. So, you know, last night I went out to a uh, an important um, business dinner uh, and uh, halfway through I had to text my wife and, and be authentic and say, do you know how much I hate these things? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> as much as I might not like them, it really added value for me in, in making that one-on-one -on -one actual connection with, with these individuals in as well for them. And you're right, it's just so important. That's that that's why I'm looking forward to you, Mark, coming out here and visiting uh visiting Nashville so I can, you know, roll out the red carpet here and uh and uh put you in, in touch with uh, some of our uh, professionals out here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that trip, definitely. And I want to give a shout out again to you know the spec op guys. Um if you're interested in attending what what date is that when that it's you're having be that? Eight, April 20th and 21st okay. here in Nashville. April 20th and 21st and they, in and Nashville. And they can reach out to me. Okay. 
And did they, just veterans or mainly special forces operations and stuff like that? Or what's the criteria? Primarily spec ops guys getting out of the military. So uh, okay. Army Rangers, Navy SEALs, uh, Green Beret, those types. And we do other uh, we do other events, but this one is specifically for them. And what does that consist of? What does that day look like for them? Is just get together, have barbecue, or is it kind of mentorship, or what does that look like? Mentorship, mentorship okay. at our headquarters with all different uh, departments within the company. Wow! Uh, to see, you know, to get to help them gain knowledge of what we do at Bridgestone and where they may find a good fit. Okay. So spec talk, folks, if you're just getting out or still active, April 20th, 21st in, uh, at Bridgestone headquarters, mentorship by executives, some of the leadership there at Bridgestone, uh, give Glenn a shout out or give me a shout out too. I'd be happy to help, you know, uh, organize this and then point you guys in the right direction. If you're listening to this, uh, you can play rewind, find out more details. And what I'll do for you, Glenn, is I'll put a uh, little, when we post this, I'll have my team do it. Um, invite on there for spec op folks for that event and so I'll, I'll help you guys promote it too fantastic yeah and uh bravo is a great organization here and uh we support all veterans so you know if there's any veterans out there who uh need help but whether they're in this area or not i mean we have we have uh operations across the uh america's uh retail to tire building to distribution centers and so forth so yeah, I really look forward to to hearing from anyone who who is who is looking for some guidance. So Glenn, help. we've been talking about business and you know veterans. What does Glenn do to relax? That's a good question. So <laughs> you know, some of the things that we do to relax, others may not think of as as being relaxing. Now, of course, I love playing golf. So what I do to relax is I try to create a good excuse for for doing that so uh one of the things that we're involved in here with asis middle tennessee is we have a uh, a charity for the fop youth camp here in nashville uh it is um it is for the inner city kids the underprivileged inner city kids to go to camp in the summer and let's face it you know they've been dealt a, a, a pretty tough hand the last couple of years and so to get them out of their homes, get them out of the city to a nature environment uh, where they can swim and play and be outdoors and do things that kids are supposed to be doing. Um, and it puts them together with Metro police officers who volunteer their time to be out there um, coaching the kids uh, at, at the camp. So we put this on. It's going to be on May 20th uh, here at uh, Gaylord uh, uh, Golf uh, Links. And um, I, I'm just really passionate about it because also another group that's had a tough time is our, you know, our law enforcement. And this really supports them and shows that we love them and appreciate them and, uh, and helps them do their job because they go into these camps in civilian clothes with the kids and their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. And they're normal people. They're normal men and women. Right. And they help these kids and mentor these kids. And then on Fridays, and these are the guys that are out on the beat, and on Fridays they come in uniform and they bring their horses and they bring all of their vehicles and helicopter and stuff and talk to the kids about, about what they do. And it really establishes a bond. And I guess the other thing I do to relax is I have uh, an eight, 10 and 12 year old kids at home. So they <laughs> help me uh, relax every single day. <laughs> you look young, you got that young, that big, that, Young face and a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kids after, will do that. After, you know, when you get older, I guess the other thing that I'd say to those, you know, getting out of the military or, you know, looking for, they're looking for their next mission, right? That's, they get into all kinds of trouble when they don't know what their next mission is. They need to find out what their next mission is. And maybe their next mission is just putting out resumes and, and interviewing, but Make sure, and, and I, I would think that you're probably the same, is um, you need to have a routine, right? So I get up in the morning at 5 a.m. I do my devotional. I read my body, do meditation, whatever um, it best fits you. But then I go to the gym. 
I go to the gym and I get my one hour workout, you know, whatever that looks like to stay fit for these for these three young ones at home and also to ensure that I'm able to mentally and physically perform in my in, in, in the duties that I need to do. So you're doing the Jocko thing at 4 a.m., right? <laughs> hey, Jocko annoys me with his watch every morning at 4 30. <laughs> <laughs> he annoys you. That's that's classic. But there's there's no, there's a consistent no, I, pattern I, I, there. I love there's a yeah, consistent pattern no, there. I love Jocko. I probably have his book over here. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, I have his book over here somewhere nearby me. Here we go. Here we go. Uh oh, a ah. shout out to Jocko. Shout out to Jocko. Jocko oh, nice. Leadership. There you That's go, folks. Yeah, plug in for Jocko. <laughs> it's interesting, though. Your yeah. habit is kind of like his habit. You know, success is hidden in your daily routine. And uh, that daily routine for you is uh, getting up at crack of dawn in the morning, doing your, your cardio in the morning and your workout first thing you do. And there's something to be said that because it releases endorphins throughout the day. Once you do that, it just releases all those endorphins in the mind to put that kickstart. Yeah, absolutely. 